Merry Christmas, everyone. Uh, we're pretty excited today. Christmas was a couple of days early for us, as we've just received yesterday two boxes of Manufacturer Wardhof Ultramatic watches, uh, two crates, I should say. So um, we received those on Friday, just before uh, the Christmas weekend, and uh, we will be shipping uh, those out to our customers on uh, the 24th and 25th of December. So uh, those will enter shipping then and uh, be on their merry way. So um, just to help people out, we've been asked a lot of questions about these watches as people are starting to get them on Kickstarter. We've obviously had a lot of pre-orders in the store. Uh, so I wanted to do two things. First of all, I wanted to use this video as an opportunity to explain about shipping from the store uh, for people who've ordered with us. But the second thing, which is, I think, more important, uh, people are expressing interest in these watches now. Their friends are getting them and people are having a little bit of difficulty working out what color to go for. So it doesn't matter whether you buy from us, you buy from uh, Wardhof, you buy from someone else. Um, this video might be helpful for you. We can have a look at some of the colors and look at some of the features of this watch that might not have been covered yet in other video reviews. Now, now people are starting to get these timepieces and I can cover some of the differences perhaps between uh, the preview, uh, the sample prototype, uh, watches that, uh, were reviewed, uh, roundabouts the Kickstarter time or the ones that you might have seen for Manufacture Wardoff, and we can cover the production differences as well. So first of all, let's just start with um, what we're shipping out. We've received two crates of watches literally on Friday. We'll be shipping them out uh, Monday slash Tuesday. Yes, we are shipping Christmas Day, and our shipping company is shipping then. So that's good news for people who pre-ordered with us. However, um, we are expecting a third crate about a week from now. So people who have ordered this uh, diamond silver watch here, the kind of um, pearl colored one, we will uh, probably uh, be able to ship 90% of them to uh, on uh, Monday slash Tuesday. And the remaining 10% when we get that third crate a week from now. For all the other colors right now, we should be good. I'm showing three colors here. We've actually packaged a fourth color. I'll, I'll go over the colors in a second. So for everyone else, uh, we've managed to fulfill uh, all the pre-orders from the first two crates but because we had so many diamond silver orders we have some of those coming from the third crate which is due in a week from now but most of you are going to be getting your watches sent on uh, Monday or Tuesday so good news I think for most people so let's let's start looking at some of the features and uh, explain about the watches we have here before I pick these two up it's a little bit pretentious normally to wear gloves in a video review I think but these two uh, watches are customer watches and uh, this, these are not, so I don't have to be so careful with the gloves here. And what we do in the store, uh, we take the plastic wrap off. We actually make sure the watch works. So I can go over what we do on, on the watches that might be useful for some people too. Uh, and then we try and get the plastic covers back on afterwards. We don't take the covers on the back off. We don't necessarily do anything beyond get to the... Um, <clears throat> And get to the glass at the front so we can make sure it's sapphire crystal and also get to the crown so we can do some of the tests here so the typical tests we'll do without winding the watch we'll just move it a little bit to rotate the um, rotor at the back and see if it starts running on the um, uh, tourbillon automatically or basically the, the watch starts operating based upon the use of the uh, rotor on the back the next thing we would do would be hand wind it so that the power reserve would actually, um, sorry, not, probably not very good focus here. I've just noticed on the camera here. So the, the power reserve would actually um, increase, make sure that goes around. And then we would pull the stem out uh, on the crown, turn the dial, make sure that the hands don't touch, that it, that it rotates freely around the dial and make sure the 24 hour time works as well and then set the time on these particular watches we don't have uh, a second hand because the tourbillon which i can see here it's, it's a lovely little tourbillon it actually rotates once every minute it rotates 360 degrees so that is the equivalent to your second hand so we just set the time uh, on this one here which is my own personal watch i've um 
also be running it for 24 hours as a time test, make sure these are fairly accurate with their timing. So this is the diamond silver. It's the most popular color, and I can see why. Um, it's a very conservative when you have a white dialed watch, but it actually goes really well with the tourbillon. Um, and it's the kind of thing you could wear for anything. could wear it very formally dressed indeed for a wedding or something. So it's very formal. And uh, it's not a white color. It's more like a pearl color. And you've got a lot of uh, stainless steel. And I don't know how well this camera will pick up on it. But can you perhaps see if I move this down here? There's some patterning. There's radiating spokes. Um, that was not a watch. I promise it was a watch strap that I had here. Um, one of my own straps too. So po apologies for the noise. Um, but you can basically see uh, radiating spokes where Wardhoff is. And then the rest of the dial actually has vertical lines on it. I don't know how well we can pick that up, maybe from a distance. Uh, might not pick it up too well. There's some great photographs out there. I'll put one up on the screen. But this is the most popular color. It comes on the black strap by default, but you can also obviously go for the bracelet as well. I am the strap that I dropped on the floor was one of the, one of the uh, leather straps I was going to use for uh, explaining uh, the pros and cons of the straps and the bracelet for people. But it is a lovely watch. Uh, I think this is probably the most balanced color. Um, it doesn't. Um, accent the tourbillon too much uh the, which the black one does and the black one is a very sophisticated color as well um but this is um probably you know if you're going to go for elegance um probably looks the most expensive of the three to be honest if that matters to you uh i just think all three are lovely watches but this is the most conservative one and i think it's the one that balances the most and certainly is the most popular color so what I dropped on the floor, just so you know, it was this tag from this particular spare strap that I have. Uh, so on the left here we have, it's called the Obsidian Black, um, and it's another stainless steel uh, silver coloured uh, watch. But this, oh, you can see the vertical lines better here now. But with um, uh, a black colour dial, there's also one I can't show because we've packaged these up already. And we don't have any spare, but we have enough to go out to our customers. We, there's also the Imperial Black, which is a gold version of this. So it's the same black dial, but with gold rather than a silver stainless steel color. I think this one does show the the, the lines a little bit easier for people. Uh, so if you want to show off the uh, decoration on the dial, the kind of vertical stripes, and the radiating spokes on Wardhoff. The black does pick up on that a little bit better. It's also a sophisticated conservative color. You could wear it to a wedding or you could wear it to something a bit more modern. Black is a rather cool color. Um, so this is another good conservative choice for people. Or if you would like to go for gold, um, certainly gold's an option as well. The third one that we have is the Royal Blue. This is a very metallic shine to it. It's not, it's almost a sunburst. In fact, you can probably just about pick up a sunburst around the outer spoke there. It also has the decorations. It does show them pretty, uh, pretty well. Also a little bit easier than the white to show the decorations, uh, on the, on the main dial. Uh, you do get more of a contrast with the tourbillon if you want to accent that. And the uh, 24 hour wheel has a, obviously a map on it for all three of them, which is a map of the North Pole. And that's a blue color. So the fact that the color is the same kind of, you know, kind of makes that a little bit nicer, perhaps, than on the other ones where the blue is a little bit separate to the rest of the colors on the watch. Uh, it is a brighter blue. So um, it's kind of, I mean, if I put this on my wrist just to show you, this is a... Um, a spring release. I might as well show you this too, so I got it around the wrong way for me. So press this in. It's a spring release, and of course this is me using my. Uh... <sighs> where are we? Where are we? Um, sorry, I'm not used to doing this with gloves on. You can tell this is live, um, but you normally just press this in. There we go, and it's a spring release, and I should be lifting this up, I think. And it's not working for some reason. What have I done wrong? Oh, there we go. I hadn't pressed it in. It's, it's me, me wearing gloves. So I'm not used to doing a spring release wearing gloves here. So I have fat fingers. This is my watch. So I'm going to be able to just do this more normally. So basically, uh, this one has a look that's, uh, again, you pick it up on it very nicely with the uh, colors, but it's a bright color. So it's, it does go very well with blue. I don't know if you want to wear it with a formal black and white. It's uh, 
you know, it depends really what you want. If you want to have, if you have it like me and you have a collection of watches, you have different colors like, you know, reds, blues, green watches to wear with different clothes. This is more of a, I would say, a casual look to a Tourbillon watch. It's still a smart dress watch. You can still dress up on it, but, you know, I wouldn't wear this with a tuxedo necessarily. It's just a bit too much of a bright blue for that. So I don't know if you think about those kind of things when picking a watch, uh, but those are the kind of things I think about, and that's what's made my own personal choice a little bit hard. This was the one that I picked because I've got a lot of other colors, including black and in including white. But having said that, the Tourbillon here is really gorgeous. This is probably my second choice, and this was my wife's first choice. Um, so I think it might show the decorations off not quite so well, but it does balance probably the best in terms of color and being conservative. You could wear, really wear that with anything. So that gives you an idea of the colors. And then we have some options. We have a bracelet and we have straps. So let's talk about uh, the options and then I'll point out some of the features that I haven't seen in other reviews that I found uh, good and bad. I'll give you the good and the bad as well. There's no perfect watch out there. I think this is overall a very good watch else I would never have considered stocking it in the store. Uh, so obviously you know I like this before I'm even showing you this and I actually do do watch reviews and I try and be unbalanced, uh, not unbalanced, I try and be balanced uh, as much as possible. Um, so I'll try and point out some pros and cons. So um, the first thing is this, uh, uh, how should I put this? The ends of this, uh, the, the uh, lug ends look like they're screwed pins, which is often a plus because that's a little bit stronger and more sturdy than, um, your typical spring bar. Um, so I actually thought these were screwed pins. In fact, they're not screwed pins at all. You can see you've got a quick release pin here. These are actually spring bars. It's really easy to, to release these. You just push the pin down and it comes out. Same way for putting it in. It's just as easy. You can, you know, push this down and uh, after putting the bottom end in and it goes in very easily. So these are actually standard um, spring bars. They just have these screw decor, screw like decorations on the end to make you think they're screwed pins. So initially I thought, well, are they cutting corners? Is that a bad thing? But you know, I thought about this a lot and I think they've put thought into it too. And it is actually a good thing because uh, well, the issue with screwed pins, well, it's two issues. First of all, in order to unscrew them, oh, you think, great, easy, a screwdriver. You need two small screwdrivers, whatever it is, 1.2 millimeters, one to hold it still and one to turn the other end. So you need two screwdrivers. But the real issue is the straps, because typically this is just a fairly standard strap with just a spring, um, a spring bar in it that's very small so it's a very small hole opening if you buy a third party strap this is a standard 22 millimeter lug width you can use third party straps if you had a screwed um uh screwed lug ends here instead it will be a thicker bar and that means a wider hole so you just can't use any old strap you would have to get one specially uh, suitable for uh, this type of um, end. So I'm glad that this is more of a decoration. And also when it comes to bracelets, you could use a third party aftermarket bracelet uh, rather than this one if you didn't want to use this one. So that basically gives you some advantages. You can go with stock choices that are 22 millimeters for either. So that was a plus. I didn't expect that. I thought it was actually um, until we received those what these watches that it was probably um, uh, you know, screwed ends, but it, but it's not. It's just standard quick release push pin, which is actually very convenient and easy for people to use. Another plus with this push pin, uh, is unexpected, uh, uh but I, uh, usually on most of these bracelets, you also have a quick release push pin bracelet. So you could literally change over in less than a minute between from your bracelet, uh, to your strap or back again. So that could be a handy choice as well. Uh, so let's talk about, I'm going to take this completely off so we can take a better look at it. Um, see how easy it is to do. So let's take a look at this bracelet. Uh, this is the bracelet from Wardhoff and we'll compare it with a strap. And this is the one I dropped on the floor. So <laughs> I was going to show you some stuff and, and now I had a little accident with it. So the, this strap is actually a nice one. Uh, it's a calf leather. It's very supple. Um, I should be really bending one of the other ones here. It's padded here, but it's it's pretty supple among the rest. And I was wearing this one um, 
for about 24 hours when I was testing it. Um, and it, and it's been very comfortable. It is a signed, um, not clasp, but a signed, um, uh, a clasp, sorry. It is a signed clasp. Um, and it's, uh, got, um, you know, it's fairly nicely done. It's probably, uh, I mean, it's fairly convenient. I often prefer butterflies, to be honest, but uh, it, it's certainly robust uh, and well built. It's not stamped metal, which is nice. It's actually uh, properly machined. And then on the bracelet, um, some differences here. There is no signature, so it's possibly a stock bracelet from somewhere, um, but it's solid link. It's also got the same. This one fell out, so I'm, it's kind of convenient. It's got the same quick release uh, push pins. You just literally push it in to to release the spring. It is a butterfly class, which is what I would expect. They're all solid links. It's very um, got a bit of heft, a bit of weight, which is nice. And on the butterfly, it's a little bit of perlage, which is which is nice. So even though it's not got a signature, which is a little disappointing, being the fact that it's uh, the one that you get officially from manufacturer Wardhoff. Um, it's still a very good bracelet. The only issue I've had with that, because I do like to say pros as well as cons, uh, it is really well built. It's a friction pin or a push pin, so you need a little pin tool to take these pins out. Normally that's very straightforward. I found the pins in here to be a little bit stiff, and when I took a couple of them out to take a look, the reason for that is instead of just the very tip of the pin being split, the entire length of the pin, except for the very bottom, has the split. So it's like a folded over, uh, maybe a hair clip or something. Is a, it will be a parallel with just a very long V shape to it. So as a result, it can be pretty stiff in there. And you do sometimes, you might want to uh, get that professionally resized if you do get one of these. But it looks really nice. Um, your other choice is to get a, maybe an aftermarket one where you can more easily push the pins out or get screwed pins. But I think for the, you know, value is, is certainly there. It, it looks really good, uh, with the finish on this. It's, it's very, very nicely brushed. They didn't do a mix, mix of brushed and polished. And of course, on the side here, because we have ribbed, you can't really tell if it's polished or brushed. And then we have a polished top for contrast. So it actually did look very nice on the bracelet. I should have, uh, focused on that maybe put that on my wrist first but i think overall for a dress look i would wear a um leather strap but for day-to-day -day use if you want to show off your tourbillon you know obviously a bracelet lasts longer the more comfortable if it's hot and sweaty uh and this is a good one to go for so certainly you could consider ordering this or you can use an aftermarket one so i think we've get, kind of given a rough idea what's there and um <clears throat> You know, color-wise, I can hold them side by side so people can compare a little bit, which is uh, what I've not seen in other videos where people have just one. So you can see I'm, I'm twisting these a little bit. The Oh, and I've done it without the gloves on. I'm going to have to give these a nice polish when I'm done. So uh, bad, Neil. So basically, you can pick up much more easily on the black the extra patterning on the dial. I won't quite call it Gillesche. It probably is Gillesche, but it's it, it it's it could be something else. Uh, not so easy to pick up on the white, but the white has the more luxurious look to it, and they're both conservative and usable. So your conservative choice is between these two, and it's it's a tough call. I might actually go for all three, and um, but maybe I'd personally pass on the gold one just to keep a a stainless set. Um, but I. I'll be doing that uh, later on after we get the next shipment. And then the the blue one obviously picks up very easily as well. So the blue and the black definitely pick up on the decorations on the dial a lot in a lot more nicer fashion than you would otherwise uh, get with the with the white. So let's do a few quick tests. I've obviously done this already, but um, just to help people out, somebody else done a sapphire crystal test elsewhere. Not so sure. So we'll just set that up ready to do in a minute. Um, one thing that I have heard mentioned, uh, oh, it looks rather fat. It looks like it's t uh, fat on the wrist. This is actually under 14 millimeters. It's 13.8 millimeters on the nose. I've measured it, uh, myself because I didn't believe it too. I think it just looks fat because first of all, it's a vertical side, which is really accented by the ribbing. It's a very nice decorative ribbing on this. So it's quite noticeable. 
But it, considering what you've got, it's actually, I'm, I'm quite amazed it's under 40 millimeters. First of all, you have a multi-layered dial here. You've got an outer track that's on a higher level with applied indices as well. Then you've got an inner track with a decoration. And you've even got beneath that, you've got some uh, sub-dials um, as well. Which And then, of course, the Torbion. Uh, amazing that you could get a Torbion in an under 14 millimeter watch. You've also got a bit thicker sapphire glass on the back. It's an exhibition case back uh, with a rotor because it's automatic. So all these things with this, you know, it's it's unusual for me to find this kind of combination in a 14 millimeter or less watch. I'd expect it to be slightly bigger. It's 42 and a half millimeters diameter, so roughly the sim same as a 42 millimeter watch. For memory, it's, I think it's 50 millimeters lug width. Let me just check that. I have a sheet of cheat sheet here. And I have measured it, but of course I've just forgotten. Um, let's see, it's 50 millimeters, yes, which is pretty standard combination. So it should work well on a medium sized wrist as well as a large wrist. Possibly not the, the best choice on a small wrist, but, uh, you know, a men's wrist, I wear seven and a half inches and, uh, this looks great on me and I've got a lot of space each side so you could probably six and a half inches and up would would, would work I think uh, under six and a half inches perhaps not uh, so seven and a half inches is 19 centimeters if that helps you so it would work on a medium to large wrist for sure um, so sapphire glass test let's get this out the way if it lights up at all uh, it's sapphire glass it would normally light up typically three bars or so three or four bars let's take a look sapphire glass so we have sapphire glass on the front which is not unexpected it does have an anti-reflective coating on the back which surprises some people we also have a sapphire glass um, which is a nice feature this one has a protective covering on it still this was beg your pardon this is the one that's my watch so let's do that there we go it's lighting up uh, several bars here so basically sapphire glass on the front and back which is a nice touch to have that on the back so they haven't cut corners which is why i think the uh, kind of uh, pseudo screws here are a deliberate design choice to allow people to have a, a choice of um straps aftermarket straps i actually like that they did that so the, um, let's talk a little bit about other things on this watch that are different compared to the Kickstarter campaign. Um, I can pull this out just to move things out the way a little bit. So the first thing is you can see here, it used to say sun and moon. I'm so glad they took that off. That was one of the suggestions that myself and a colleague made in on a, on a Facebook group uh, that, that we run with the Kickstarter watches group on Facebook. And uh, it used to say sun and moon. It's not a sun and moon. So they, they took that off and just left this with the uh, hour markers instead. So I think that will allow us to see a little bit more of the reserve. Uh, I mistakenly thought that was a 50 on the left. It's not. Um, it's actually a, a zero 05. So and it does work accurately on all the watches I've tested for customers. It starts at the just at the line to the left of the zero fives. It starts at the zero zero and it winds all the way around to the um, move this out of the way a bit more all the way around to the um, end of uh, the the beginning of the right hand side of the word reserve. So it winds to about 40 hours. So uh, I have to go check. It's probably a 42 hour um, power reserve on this. I thought it might have been a bit more. Let me just check that for you. It will say somewhere. Power reserve, 40 hours. Yeah, so it actually is fairly accurate as a power reserve, which is sometimes I don't see that on other watches. So I do like that. And then, then there's a new, obviously it's not going the full way around. So the word where it says reserve is perfectly positioned as the two ends of the marker. So you can easily see the power reserve. Um, so that, that's a pretty nice feature on the watch. I'm glad they did that. Um, let's talk a little bit about, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking at? Talk a bit about uh, tourbillons because, you know, it's kind of like the bull in the china shop. Uh, we need to cover that a little bit. This movement is a, um, Peacock 5212, uh, which is a Chinese movement. So let's talk about that a little bit because that also, uh, sometimes concerns people when you talk about a Chinese movement in a quality watch. So the first things first, if I wanted to get a Swiss-made tourbillon, 
I'm probably going to be looking at spending $15,000 plus. So um, if you want to get a cost-effective tourbillon, you know, microbrand price level, the only choice is a Chinese tourbillon. Uh, so that's the first thing. So if, if you make the decision, the cutoff point, you don't want to spend tens of thousands of dollars because we're talking fifteen, thirty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 quite easily, then you're really looking at under $1,500, you know, the $500 to $1,500 price range you're looking at a Chinese movement and there's really no choice in that. Um, so out of those Chinese movements, there's one or two that are extremely reliable. And this one here, I do believe they've taken this movement and actually used this in a few Swiss made watches, not the entire movement. I think just the, uh, to just the uh, tourbillon part of the movement, if I remember right, I was reading that somewhere. So, um, but either way, this is one of the most reliable ones. Manufacture Wardoff, even though they've only been around a few years, there are two people behind the, the company. Uh, one is a Swiss-based designer who designs these dials and, uh, and the watch overall. And the other partner has been... Um, a watchmaker for about 40 years. He started off with Stoa. He works um, in, he has a very reputable factory. He's been around for a number of years uh, in uh, Germany. So these watches are assembled in Germany. They're very thoroughly tested in Germany. So they're not made in China. The movement comes from China. Uh, it's one of the better movements that actually some of the Swiss brands like to quietly use as well, uh, at least for the um, uh, Torbion. And um, it's a company that actually does uh, their own assembly. Uh, they don't outsource to China or to another company. And, and they're, they're, they're genuine watchmakers that have worked on luxury watches for about 40 years or so. So uh, even though Manufactured Waterhouse is two or three years old, you've got the history uh, in what, with one of the partners there. And I think that may, gives me a little bit of reassurance, which is why we picked this one for the store. We could have picked a couple of other ones. There were three on Kickstarter, at least this year, with Torbions. Uh, one was a horrendously worded campaign saying how you have a millionaire's watch and it's worth thousands of dollars just because it has a Torbion. But the Torbion they're using, I think, is like a $250, $300 you know, component. So really not necessarily the level of this one. Uh, and another one... Um, you know, it comes in at a similar price point to this. So this was the one that we went for. I think possibly it may also be the thinnest one. I am not quite sure from, from that kind of price range. Uh, I have to go check with the manufacturer Wardhoff. But I can see why they use that. And I've got a lot of comfort with this brand in terms of looking after people when they have warranty issues. Um, because the big thing with the Torbion is it's, it would be rather hard. You can't just send it out to a normal service. If you've got a guy who does servicing for you, then your concern's going to be, will he be able to repair a Torbion? So you want to have a company that's reputable, uh, that's hopefully around, around for a while. Um, there's a lot, lot, you know, these are extremely complex mechanisms and that's why we're interested in collecting them. And I think, this has the right balance between price and reliability. So it's a very hard balance to strike because, you know, um, your only other choice is we're starting to add some zeros on the end of the price instead of a, I think this is like a $1,300 watch or call it a $1,500 watch. You know, you'd be doing a $15,000 watch. So I think this is where I want to be personally in, in, with my watch. If you got this on Kickstarter, I can't remember the price. Uh, right now we have this in the microbrand store at about $800, uh, $799. As soon as our uh, last crate comes in for our, from our pre-orders uh, in about a week from now, so around about the end of the year, we will be upping the price slightly, uh, I suspect. So um, good opportunity for people if you happen to see this review early. And of course, you can also get these from Wardhoff as well. They're also stocking them. So if you have any questions, do let me know. A couple of other points about this strap I just forgot to mention. Uh, this is um, a calf leather strap. So it's an embossed croc pattern. It's not actually crocodile or alligator, sorry. Um, and it says in German here, this is the equivalent to genuine leather in German. Uh, it's also nicely um stamped as well from Warthoff. Now, this is the exact same strap. I recognize it as on the um, Multimatics from last year's campaign. And, you know, we have those in the store as well. I actually um, 
you know, a friend of mine has a Multimatic with his with his blue strap. He, he prefers the look of it compared to the bracelet. And he wears that for work uh, in a factory where he does a lot of work with steel, uh, steel working factory. And his bezel on his Multimatic is completely scratched up. The sapphire glass is fine, luckily, so he hasn't banged it too hard. Sapphire glass doesn't scratch. You need something like a diamond to scratch it. But the bezel is completely scratched everywhere. It looks like a 50-year-old watch that's been through the wars, and it's less than a year old. And this strap is doing fine. So it's a pretty sturdy strap, even though I think it's genuine leather. It's one of it's it's actually, you know, very tight stitching on it. It's pretty supple. Um, you know, it's very easy to bend. Uh it's definitely got some padding here, which is what you want around the wrists so where it comes down from the strap, so it's comfortable. So yes, it's it is a genuine leather strap, but it is a pretty decent one. So I would start on this, see if you like it before considering another strap. Um if you are going for a watch, uh, this type of watch with the tourbillon, it's very tempting to get a custom strap, I must say. Um, you know, a genuine uh, croc strap or, you know, uh, many choices out there, you know, you know uh, that you could go for. But, you know, just getting an exotic strap even would be inter an interesting choice for this. You know, uh, ostrich leg, I can think of all kinds of things that you could do with this. So, um definitely an enjoyable watch i uh, hope this was useful for you if you have any questions please do let me know and i'll be more than happy to address them in the comments or you can contact us in the store even if you're buying the watch from someone else we're just happy to answer questions about these watches i just want to help people out um it's good for people to be informed and uh just let me know if you've got any questions thanks a lot take care